This says everything has stopped but the ship. What did you mean, Barbara, inside something? Perhaps that's why we still appear to be moving. About the scanner, Doctor. Covered with static. Let's try it again, Susan. That could be caused by an unsuppressed motor. Yes, or a magnetic field. Shall we go outside, Grandfather? No, I shan't be happy until I've solved this, this little mystery. I don't know why we ever bothered to leave the ship. Well, you're still thinking about the experiences you had with the Aztecs. No, I've got over that now. <laughs> There's one thing about it, Doctor. We're certainly different from when we started out with you. That's funny, Grandfather and I were talking about that just before you came in. How you both yes. changed? Oh, we've all changed. Have I? Yes. Yes, it all started out as a mild curiosity in the junkyard. Now it's turned out to be quite a, a quite a great spirit of adventure, don't you think? Yes. I'm a stranger in space. John Pertwee is also a stranger in space. Because today we are doing the famous John Pertwee story, The Sensorites. Yep, you heard right. Uh, with me, as ever, Mr. Barry Williams. Good evening. And Mr. Paul Ferry. I'm also a stranger. I don't know either of these two people. <laughs> What are you doing it? <laughs> I've done a podcast by accident. Here is it. Who's the president? <laughs> Which leads us nicely and directly into what year is this set in? What what future is this? Who is the president? Do they have presidents? Yeah, well, I'm guessing if it's a John Pertwee story, it's set in the early colony eras of Earth, isn't it? They must be going out colonizing planets. So it's colony and space mutants, that, that sort of, yeah. you know, yeah. Kind of, yeah, the, yeah, that kind the, of. They've got a kind of federation that mm. goes on in the Pertwee era, presumably because it's post Star Trek. Mm. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's kind of odd that, isn't it? You know, because you get Star Trek season one shown after the war games and before Spearhead from Space. Yeah. And suddenly, when they get into their stride with with Spears, who again <laughs> uh, after after units, it, it's there's federations. The Earth has a federation or empires. Yeah, um, very influential. Yeah. So is it is it federation or empire, or is it post both? Because they're a long way out this long, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Then again, then again, we could tie it into um, Planet of the Ood. Okay. Which is yeah. which? Which is you know because the huge sphere is near to the sense sphere. Well, yeah, this might refer back to it because presumably that was an earlier story, or it might easily end up being an earlier. Who knows? Story. Let's not refer back <laughs> to it. Let's not. Let's not go there. Let's not even dare. <laughs> so, um, okay, here we go. So, John Perry in the sense, right? So it's yes. another one of those times straight away, unless we're going for post three doctors, uh, yeah. where the time lords are sending the doctor off on a mission. So. Where are we setting it? Well, you could set it around Colony yeah. in Space. That would work. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's the Doctor and Joe. We've decided the Doctor and Joe, yeah? Go for the classic combination. Yeah. Yeah, thing is, though, thing is, you, though, the sensor yeah. does actually need more than just one companion. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, can mm. we work in, the, you know, for some reason, them taking my gates or something? Or bent on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bent Benton, on, Benton's bent more... Bent... Benton's more comedy value, isn't he, really? I He's... think it'd be... So I thought about it, and I thought, yeah, okay, yeah, let's make it Benton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying I thought about it. I mean, until five minutes ago, I thought it was Matt Smith. So <laughs> I, I, I thought about it, but I have thought about it in past tense, just now. Yeah. <laughs> just now, yeah. 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 So I'd argue for Benton. Yeah. yeah. Um... Isn't that Yates is just so fucking bland? I'm not, yeah, I'm not a fan of Mike Yates. He's, I don't know. I'm not a fan of Mike he, Yates. I think he's miscast yeah. in all honesty. I don't. He doesn't. Yeah. Uh, Agreed. He Agreed. Doesn't have the charisma. Um, if yeah. you get Paul Darrow alive, 
Yeah, or if they've got somebody like yeah, if they got somebody like Gareth Hunt or somebody, you could you could imagine him, you know, doing the mm. whole action. Oh, bit. But Paul Darrow, but, imagine know. it, Paul Darrow in Terror of the Autons, while I make Coco out of your Bunsen burner. You've got a problem with that, Doctor? <laughs> <laughs> Watching the footy in the beginning of the demons. <laughs> well, well, that was terrible. That was appalling. <laughs> Look at him fall. <laughs> yeah. Can we do that entire round universe? Can we? Can we recast? We can't. Can we? We decided we couldn't. <laughs> no. I mean, Benton. <laughs> Benton can't really act, but I mean, he brought the ladies. But in. hey, he, he was there. For, he was there for the mums, wasn't he? he kind of. Yeah, he was there for the mums, apparently. Yeah. Because mums had much lower standards in 1971. <laughs> yeah. um, There's a great documentary on the end of the demons and the Blu-ray where they go back to visit um, mm. Auburn again, and yeah. Yeah. the ladies there going, "Oh, I fancied you." Oh, yeah, yeah. You're so good looking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you still are. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's quite. Anyway, funny. I'm going to expire now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the Benton effect. <laughs> oh, God, blimey, that's sexy, that is. Because, because the you know, yeah, I think we will managed with three because they leave Barbara on the spaceship for like two episodes anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, holiday. yeah. it's the usual black and white era where they got loads of companions, but mm, they don't really do it. Someone's anything. having time off. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. There's lots of scenes with two of them talking to each other. Just to, mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. pad things out. Um, okay, so we decided Doctor Joe and Benton. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so we have an opening star... scene where, where I don't know, a piece of molybdenum arrives mysteriously, um, and the doctor goes, "Blimey, molybdenum!" Uh, uh, <laughs> Joe goes, "What's molybdenum?" And he explains at length what it is. <laughs> um, and Benton walks in, going, "Now, nah, what's going on? Are you two running off in that thing?" And they go, yeah. um, <laughs> "And take him with them." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Take it away, Mister Williams. Okay. Yeah. Well, they land inside something. Um, it's a spaceship, in actual fact. They've landed inside a spaceship, which is, you know, in 1964, was obviously quite, whoa! Well, it's the first time it's happened to Doctor Who. Uh, oh, it is, yeah, yeah. Definitely yeah. is. I can't think of a previous example, no. Yeah. It's going to be a much bigger set, isn't it, than in the original? Much bigger, yeah. It's a pretty big set, actually. Well, it is, but it's kind of strangely shared out, the space. Because mm. you do get those big cor- when they go through the door, there's those big corridors and things behind. Mm. But the actual flight deck stuff happens there, which they don't see, <laughs> which is literally two or three feet away from them. Yeah, mm. it's going to be more <laughs> rooms, basically. They're going to be more yeah. Like rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they are out in the storeroom, like in the mutant center. The TARDIS materializes in the storeroom, probably yeah. adjacent yeah. to the flight deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'd be a bit like the um, Frontier in Space spaceship. The... Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Be mm. like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it would, yeah. Yeah. Which season are we? Which, which story are we replacing? Colony in Space? Did well, we see? Colony, Colony in Space. space. Yeah, yeah. 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 Colony in Space? Cool. Because it's in season eight. Aye. Yeah. Aye. And that's, yeah, that is a six part, isn't it? Yeah. It's a six part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're replacing six for six. Yay. Cool. Nice. Which, given how slowly this moves, might not be a good idea. But hey, <laughs> let's go for it. <laughs> yeah, so they find the crew on the flight deck, uh, and they're, they're apparently dead. Yeah, um, but it turns out they're still warm and oh, uh, dead. Yeah, they revive them. They revi- well, they just revive them with a little box. In the heart well, part. they don't. They don't. They don't revive them to begin with, do they? Because one of them goes. Ah, ah, ah. And, and falls over a bit, and they go, "Fuck me, he was dead." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what Joe says, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, in the Pertwee era, obviously we've had films like 2001, we know a bit more about suspended animation. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. they're in capsules, maybe they're kind of... Oh, no, I, I don't think they are. I love I love that opening. I, I like the sensor rights, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to put yeah. my card on the table. I like the sensor rights. Um, um, alert, someone likes the sensor rights. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you can you can play into the cheap fandom tropes if you wish, Baz. I am better than that. So, um, I think it's really creepy. I think this whole exploration bit and the find dead bodies, one of them suddenly comes to life. I think it's great. I like it. I quite like yeah. the way Mervyn Pinfield directs it. Um, so I'd, I'd have them, yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it. I'd have Benton going first, going, go, all right, let me do this, Doc. And yeah. He gets his gun out, gets his pistol out. Is, is regulation unit pistol, yeah. um, and, and you know, and then suddenly, Karange, they're alive. 
Hmm. Is Benton in his uniform, or was he just about to go off and leave again? And uh, <laughs> gets dragged uniform. into something else. <laughs> I think it's his uniform because it'll be so wonderfully out of place. Yeah, yeah. They get this, they wake this crew up basically. And it turns out uh, they're from the 28th century. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's uh, there's the captain, Captain Maitland. He doesn't get a first name, he's just Maitland. No, just Maitland, yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, that's what it is. Maitland and Carol. Carol, yeah. yeah. There's Carol, Carol. The Dolly Bird, yeah. Carol, yeah. Who's got massive, massive blonde hair. Yeah, cool. Going up, all oh, right, yeah. Just going up the top of her head, just you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's probably got yeah. less massive hair now. It's probably all, all tumbling down her shoulders. Yeah, yeah. In the seventies, it's going to be slightly different, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's not. I do like Ilona Rogers. I've always had a thing for Ilona Rogers. So yeah, it's Carol and Maitland. Uh, they're on the flight deck, and uh, their spaceship, the spaceship, has been held there uh, by the mm-hmm. Sensorites. So yeah. who's playing Carol and Maitland? Um. Good question. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's Maitland, um, John Ringham from Colony and Spears. It could be, yeah, John Ringham, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He'd be better. I mean, Maitland's falling. He'd be uh, astonished. Really bad. Yes, he's terrible. Really bad. Thank God to get rid of him. After Thank God Carol's the one that goes down to the sense sphere. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, he's really can bad. Carol, can Carol be Anushka Hempel? Yes. Okay. As yeah. far as I'm concerned, anything can be a Nuska Hempel. Apart <laughs> <laughs> from the towel, obviously, that'd be crazy. I'm always surprised. She, she crops up in a lot of TV series in the 70s. Mm-hmm. But I'd always kind of thought of her more as like a film actress, because she does do a lot of films as well. But she, mm. unlike a lot of people of that time, she seems to do a lot of film and a lot of TV. Mm. She mm-hmm. doesn't seem to sort of differentiate. Yeah. Yeah. Work. yeah. I suppose, yeah, the UK still had a film industry at that point. So, you know, it was, yeah. you know, you could be yeah. in a carry-on one week and then Doctor Who the next, you know, so. Yeah. Like Hammer. Or Hammer. Yeah. Why are you being served? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and just get Hempel. I'm just get Hempel and John Ringham. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. Excellent. It's great casting. Yeah. So, yeah, they're on this spaceship and uh, these old sensorites, they keep putting them into a deep sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. More deep, more like a coma. This will uh, be a lot better with John Ringham acting in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this will actually be poignant. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Benton's kind of prowling around, going, "What's going on, Doc?" <laughs> yeah. Doc's going, "Go, please be quiet." <laughs> so while they're explaining this, that uh, a mysterious hand mm. somewhere uh, removes the TARDIS lock. Yeah. So it's good that it's not two feet away anymore. It's kind of, <laughs> we put it in the set. Yeah, it, it really is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Much yeah. as I love the story, it's kind of like, did no one turn round? Just like <laughs> turn round and go, hang on, what the fuck is it? Why have I got back to about this? Thing is, it, it's the one, I mean, you were saying that, you know, that Mervyn Pinfield's direction generally is very good in it, but I think mm. he falls mm. down in when he does a pan across because you kind of see stuff going on with the TARDIS and you see stuff going on with them. And yeah. then when they say, oh, look at the TARDIS, he pans across and you see that it's only at about three feet. And I think that if he hadn't done the pan... That's fairly constant in the 60s. I mean, even in Marco Polo, you can kind of hear them walk two steps and go, oh, hello. When it's <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, you've just walked across. Are you a, doing a the time seven. round version where they were telling us Marco <laughs> Polo? Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, the wall of Tigala. Brilliant. I love that. <laughs> Oh, look at the fake I I tape on that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I've got a bit yes. of as well. That's really convincing, isn't it? At my age. Yeah. <laughs> <Sure. Really>? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll stop. That's the exciting thing. Nobody in the universe can do what we are doing. The music, I think, I think the music's not going to be as good. I like the music in the sense, right? I like Norman Kay. Mm. The three stories he did. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, are we going to have Malcolm though? No, Dragging not about. In space. No, we've got Dudley. Oh, but yeah. but we've got Dudley with the Radiophonic Workshop in season eight. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot oh, of building. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. Right. And so <laughs> my, that's my season eight score. Yeah, yeah. 
Let's all quickly do an acapella season eight score. <laughs> <laughs> It's like being in night something more all over again. <laughs> we are the radio for the workshop. We are, we are. <laughs> and we claim our five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Royalties. <laughs> um, I love that piece of music, um, a piece of Dudley Simpson mu- radiophonic music on Day of the Daleks. Um, I think it's, I don't know if it's the bit on the kind of tricycle thing, but it always sounds like he's slightly behind the beat on the music. Yeah. He's slightly behind the music mm. as if he's kind of playing it to catch up. It's a very weird thing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That mm. probably doesn't make any sense at all, what I just no, said. No, I don't but... mean, because you've got, you got musicians going ding, 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 I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of that era's music. I like Dudley an awful lot, but I'm really not a fan of season eight music. The only time it works for me uh, is the Mind of Evil. Yeah, it, it gets better uh, when he yeah. starts to use the marimba. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I think he used the marimba beforehand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's not just sometimes when Chan. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it, it's, it's when they get the Delaware. I just don't like the Delaware. I wish the Delaware had never uh, happened. Mm. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. Yeah. Fuck the Delaware. <laughs> I'm saying it. I'm sure it has its hand. Hmm? You think it was just the BBC had bought it? So they thought, oh, we're going to have to Boy, fucking use it, it now. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's how it was. It probably never used it on anything other than Doctor Who. Yeah. But it was really fucking expensive as well. I think it was <laughs> yeah. 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 Enormous amounts of money. Yeah. It paid a huge <laughs> amount of money there. Sort of sat in the corner of the workshop and they all looked at it and went, what do we do with this then? And you go, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All over some actually quite nice compositions. Mm. Sorry to fans of the Delaware, sorry. But you're <laughs> wrong. The grotesquely ugly freaks. <laughs> I heard any fans of the Delaware tuning in. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be tuning in again. <laughs> Everyone's moved across from the Delaware podcast and they're here tonight. <laughs> but, um, we've lost them. It's what in business is known as a sunk cost fallacy, you know, where basically they spend so much money on it that they're just going to keep using it, mm-hmm. regardless mm-hmm. of how awful it is. Mm-hmm. That was very grown up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know who you are anymore. Hello, <laughs> and welcome to the uh, business podcast. <laughs> you sunk, today we're talking about sunk cost fallacies with Mr. Paul. <laughs> Have you sunk cost any fallacies lately? <laughs> Join us for our exciting section on international accounting standards. <laughs> now over to the more vibrant Open University. <laughs> I did study commerce years ago, and occasionally things just stick with me. Did you really? The... Yeah. Well, the member, isn't it? yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Again, I don't know who you are anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, Doctor Who. Um... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, basically, they, they get the story. I'd from... love to see Pertwee saying sun cost fallacy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it, he's got time, you know. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But alas, not quite the right diction. <laughs> yes. Sun cost fallacy. Yes. It's a sun cost fallacy show. <laughs> what the fuck are you saying, Doctor? Shh. Here come the sense right. <laughs> he's not going to be happy about this, is he? He's not, he's not going to write his <laughs> story. Right. Why have you called him the sensorite? <laughs> Go into the sense sphere, Joe. A sense sphere? Oh, that's even worse. Yes, the sense sphere. <laughs> John sense sphere. <laughs> I don't want to think about John Pertwee's sense sphere. Um, <laughs> He's going to be throwing up Barry Letts and going, look, Barry, I don't think we need all this done. I love this. I can do this with a look. Yeah. <laughs> can you walk with a look, John? This. <laughs> 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 Sorry, John, I'm not, not quite making that out. See you in the studio. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Oh, okay. We've lost Delaware fans and Lispers. <laughs> <laughs> but we've gained fans of sunk cost fallacies. So <laughs> we have. We have. Swings yeah. around about. Yeah. 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 Hurrah. Yeah. <laughs> Been that, uh, that demographic are waiting for us to mention that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> In 40 odd episodes. Exactly. That tiny faction of Doctor Who fans who were reading some cross verses, who were a great band. 
Almost as good as Delaware. <laughs> yeah, they played everything on the Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yes. Uh, We've got five episodes to get one. through. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, listener. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry, listener. Commercial time. They all say who is Dr. This is Tim Trelaw. This is David J. Howe. I'm Peter Purvis. I am Sadie Miller. This is Lauren Cornelius. Larry, it's Fraser. For all things in the Doctor Who collecting world and beyond, the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. I'm Larry Van Mersberg and your host, and I've been collecting for 42 years. You're listening to Time Ram on the Direction Point Podcast Network. They get the story from the crew, basically, that the sensorites are trapping them, but they're not killing them. You know. Yeah. Um, so what happens is uh, some of them decide to go look for water. It's Barbara and Susan, original version. So I'm guessing probably just Joe. Really, just Joe. Yeah. Goes for water. yeah. Um, well, actually, probably Joe and Benton because Benton's going to go with her, isn't he? Isn't Benton going to be hammering through the door later on? He's going to come out. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Fine, fine. Yeah, just Joe. Okay. So uh, yeah, wow, that shows how lowly I think of Joe. She can't even be allowed to go look for water for us. <laughs> <laughs> In season eight, she's kind of like that, though. Yeah. She's all right if she's wearing trousers, though. Maybe she's wearing trousers in this story. It's not me. I think she's wearing trousers in this story. Yeah, let's give her some trousers. Yeah. yeah. She looks good in trousers. Yeah. She looks good in everything, to be fair. You know, it's kind of, you know. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd do a croak of disagreement. Uh, <laughs> I registered your croak of disagreement. Thank you. I suppose some of the similes back into our bit, yeah. Um, yeah, precisely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so anyway, she meets John, who's the mineralogist. They've been, they've, they've been talking about John, uh, so John's a bit sinister. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get the impression something's a bit wrong with John, but she bumps into him um, in the sort of, sort of rear section of the ship. Is he played by Roger Delgado and his name's like John Magister or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> and halfway through, they're going to go, wait a minute. <laughs> Let's have the let's save the master for later on. We might we might need him. Fair enough. Let's, Fair let's enough. Keep on for this bit. So a season eight story without the master so far. And then the master can turn up in like episode. <laughs> okay, three, okay, right. right. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, there's time for the master. There's time for the. There's loads of time for the master. But, you know, we're not in any rush here. <laughs> no, no, this is the fence rights. We're not in a rush. <laughs> no, we're not. One thing we're not in is a rush. No. <laughs> We've got two and a half episodes of scenes on the street at first, so you know we're <laughs> we're good to go. We're fine. So yeah, basically she meets John, who uh, traps her. He traps her in the sort of rear end of the ship, mm-hmm. and uh, it's established basically that the sense rights are sending her a bit crazy, and he appears sort of threatening for a while, but then he sort of, he basically he just starts crying. Basically, he's mm-hmm. just, just not very happy. Um, Who will be playing John? It's got to be somebody edgy, isn't it? Somebody, mm. Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> That's edgy. Yeah, yeah they could possibly, yeah, possibly, yeah, they could possibly afford him at that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. He starred in War and Peace in 1970, so I think he might be a bit big for Doctor Who, even in 71. Yeah, but he was in Department S in 1968. Oh, Department S would have paid him a lot more, surely. <laughs> Not an awful lot more. What year was Magic? I guess that was kind of his sort of breakthrough a bit, wasn't it? Magic's been with us forever. <laughs> What's magic? I've never heard of magic. I've never heard of magic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, um, Richard Ambrose film about the ventriloquist who's uh, mm. with his evil dummy. I mean, the main thing yeah. I remember from that period is in 1970, he's in the BBC War and Peace, which is like 20 episodes or something. Mm-hmm. And it's got a very young Colin Baker in it playing his mate. Mm. Uh, yeah. Anthony Hopkins playing Pierre and Colin Baker's playing the slightly loose friend of his. And uh, just baby... Baby Colin Baker, but so good looking. He's been in, he's just been in War and Peace for the Beeb. He's, mm-hmm. he's doing Beeb stuff, 1971. Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, but War and Peace, massive prestige 20 episode series where he's playing the star, he's the lead. All right, you think of someone. <laughs> I've just found out that Magic wasn't until 1978. So ah, it was right. a long time after that. Yeah. Come um, on then, Bad. Come on then. <laughs> <laughs> you do it. All right, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Sorry, <Anthony> Hopkins. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, Bernard Kane. 
Bernard Kay is always good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Bernard Kay is always good and likely. Yeah. And mm-hmm. in Collier Space. And in Collier Space. So. Bernard Kay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hope the next time I watch Sensor Rights, I'm thinking about how much water they could be in it. <laughs> I hurt my mind. <laughs> Fire boys. I lived in them. <laughs> Find it now. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're getting towards the end of the episode. Well, we're getting there. Um, yeah. They start hearing this kind of whining sound, which basically means the synth sites coming back. Yeah. Well, presumably they've been there all along because they've taken the TARDIS lock, so they're already there. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Bit odd. But then uh, one of them pops up at the window. I love that. I love that bit. I think it's just really eerie and strange. Uh, mm. Odd. Yeah. It's love it. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, are we going with that at the, the end of the episode? So we missed out the whole bit yeah. where they're coming towards the planet and stuff. So what? We missed out the whole stuff where the sensor rights make them plummet towards the planet and, and, and demonstrate they can control their minds and all that bit. Uh, well, I've taken that as read, but yes, you can, you can explain. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, 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 I feel I need to. I'm just, you know. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Fine, fine. Yeah. Guessing you don't respect the story much. Uh, it didn't have a point this way. Uh, <laughs> I think the sensor rights would look different. I think they'd be more half masky. Uh, yeah, they'd be more. Yeah, they'd have a mouth. You could get yeah, a bit more sort of draconian ish. You might see the eyes. Yeah, they are half masky things. They just cover yeah. it with, with with hair. They're not attached to the face, though, are they? They're just literally just. No, you can't see the eyes. Obviously, you can't see the yeah. eyes. You can't see the mouth. They just like that. You know, the human eye, the movement of the door. I think Perry Perry would want someone to be able to look him in the eye. You want, you know. Yeah. I mean, they might look a little bit like the primitives, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. They've got yeah. brains on top of the primitives in, in Colony in Space. They've got these sort of brain yeah. things going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, since the sensor rights are all about brain, I mean, the sensor rights got very eerie. I like the design of the sensor rights. I just like them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're eerie and odd and alien. Uh, mm. And I'm down with them. They've got those sort of plate feet that you think that they must trip over all the time. The right? feet are a yes. bit sloppy, I admit. Yeah, I was talking about the heads. Yeah, the feet are just shit. Um, <laughs> but nice shit. Nice shit. Yeah. 60 shit. Uh, yeah, so episode two. Maitland and Carol, they kind of go into a trance. Yeah. Uh, so the doctor has to revive them. And uh, we the path of men in clutch, a run, a run, a run. <laughs> yeah, Or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some sort of baffle gab. <laughs> um, so the sensor rights are, are basically talking to John's mind, trying to control him. And um, Joe's able to resist them, which is a bit more in character for Susan. Um, Joe resists the master's hypnosis device. In yeah. She does, she does, yes. Yeah. She's been taught. Yeah. And uh, basically, what happens is uh, the others are able to break in. Basically, they get through the door and they get in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Benton gets his revolver out at this point and starts threatening the sensorites. <laughs> I don't think they've met the sensorites yet. They can't yeah. find John. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And they, they kind of establish, well, their theory is because John's a mineralogist that he found the sensorites mm-hmm. yeah. riches. Uh, they've got uh, valuable mm-hmm. minerals in their planet. The Earth Empire mm-hmm. can steal, and so he's been silenced basically. And uh, there are two sensorites on board observing them, but they haven't sort of revealed yeah. themselves yet. Bob and Fred, so uh, <laughs> sensorite, hmm? Bob and Fred, yeah. Fred mm-hmm. both of them played by Helen Mirren. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, some pointless yellow screen, <laughs> <got Helen Mirren. laughs> yeah. <laughs> Harry, that's going. Oh, I can use this. Oh, I'm happy. We might actually get some lady sensor rights by 1971, maybe. Well, we didn't get lady into my Orions. I doubt we will. Mm. Oh, no, probably might not. be a background lady yeah. sensor right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Those uh, natives in sort of calling in space. I mean, are they meant to be naked? They kind I of. I don't know. I don't. Well, they've got loincloths on, haven't they? 
little yeah, but they got yeah, things they got over little... there. But that's because Michael Bryant, isn't it? Michael Bryant, who famously said the sea devils will not be naked. I think he, he likes clothing his aliens because he said, why are all aliens walking mm. around naked? And it's an absolutely valid point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then the loincloths aren't really doing it, really. Are well, they? They're covering the areas. They cover the areas. Yeah. Yeah. It's better than now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But these, I, I, I imagine they'd be kind of dressed much as they were, you know, sort of one piece thingies because they're an one advanced civilization, yeah. this lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They're actually yeah they, have just, they have just covered the clothes. <laughs> that would make it funny, the scene of uh, them sort of disguising themselves with the, the sash and thing. Yeah. You just have one of them being a woman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I never realized that. <laughs> I know. Really, Doctor? Because we'll you it. never took your yeah, eyes yeah. off the, for the rest of the seat. <laughs> it's going to be Benton who points it out, isn't it? It's going to be Benton kind of going, Why do all the aliens walk around yeah. naked, Doctor? Oh, please be quiet. Okay. <laughs> 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 they've got loincloths on them. You talking about Benton. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they've got advanced future loincloths. Maybe that's where they're yeah. still mm-hmm. telepathic. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to imagine the loincloths. Don't try and imagine future loincloths. Don't 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 bother. It's not worth the time of your life. It's not worth it. <laughs> don't don't make my mistake. I'm using up my remaining years yeah. on this. Yeah. Um so we're gonna spend all our remaining years on this podcast, aren't we? I mean we're going to we're gonna to have to. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> um, where was I? Yes. Yeah, they do this great 60s thing where they explain petrograph, petro- yep. spectrographs. They explain yep. spectrographs. Oh, yeah. And look at the lines on that, Doctor. Um, <laughs> so it turns out that uh, John John found mm-hmm. molybdenum. There's lots of molybdenum on the sense sphere. Yeah. And as soon as they realize this, the sense rights basically. That they step in. It's going to be Pertwee being really condescending to Joe, isn't it? But it's a spectrograph, obviously. Yeah. You fucking idiot. Because <laughs> he's doing that all the way through. Would the they go for that? Constantly putting her down. Yeah. He's, he's he is. He is. Yeah. 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 He just is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Would they be doing that educational thing though? She should respond though by just kind of going, "What's it called, Doctor? Spectrograph." Or what? Spectrograph. Say again. again. (laughs) Spectrograph. (laughs) But would would they be doing that educational thing in the 1970s, though? It's a bit kind of briefly. Very briefly. It's very 1964. So, yes. Uh, The sensors basically attack their minds. Um, So, Benton, he's like, right, I've had enough of this. He goes Mm -hmm. goes looking for them. Yeah, that's very like Benton and the Three Doctors, actually. Yeah, Trans Doctor, go, oh, mm. I've had enough of this. I'm just gonna do a thing. Yeah, yeah. We have that very lengthy scene in the visual version where Ian kind of he finds his sense mm-hmm. rights, he finds them there, and then he kind of backs yeah. away from them. Yeah, <laughs> slowly, slowly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think maybe in the 1970s we find a bit more action. Yeah, this bit. I mean, they're, they're literally they've got three rooms. They're kind well, of Benton's got his pistol with it, so he tries to use his pistol yeah. and they nullify it in a sense right way. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. Sense, yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. you know, they use their telepathic powers, yeah. and it's kind of mm-hmm. like, hmm, our weapons are useless. What we're going to do now, Doc? His barrel falls off. <laughs> no, just yeah, clunk. yeah. On the yellow background yeah. screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Harry, let's quietly have a good wank. <laughs> massive plunging yeah, yeah. all the way around. <laughs> round, round, round the bullet, or yeah. round, Harry, let's just wank. Yeah. <laughs> round everything. Round everything. <laughs> round everything. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. It's 1971. Yellow fringe is around everything. <laughs> Harry, let's concentrate on the wank on the other background. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then doing BBC training comes <laughs> If you want to wipe up Grumpy, yellow is the best colour. <laughs> oh, Bavistock's going to love this. I uh, fear for Margot Hale. <laughs> I love her name. 
I'll go hey ho. Great night. Yeah. I'll go hey ho. Hey ho. My go. I really hope I'll go hey ho. Never listen to this. Unless <laughs> <laughs> he just comes on and kind of goes, yeah, um, I must confirm that Barry Lentz did Warren go with CSO. <laughs> 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 um eventually he locks the door basically and just locks the door. He gets well he gets John. He gets John to come and lock the door for him because he can't work out to do it. Well that's gonna be John Pertwee. That's gonna be John Pertwee the sonic screwdriver. He's gonna lock it like that. Yeah, he probably is actually. Yeah, he's gonna be a bit yeah. more active than hard or he's yeah. gonna get involved. Yeah, yeah. Well he's gonna want to leap out into the corridor and go, yeah! and and like knack at the sensor rides with mighty Oh fingers. my god, yeah, the sensor rides turn out. John's John's going to be doing a VC. He's going to be trying to. On them, isn't he? He's going to be. Well, but yeah, they might paralyze yeah. him with the mighty Brians. Um, and he's going to gurn a bit and mm. fall against the wall and then crawl back and gasp yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe sensorites make mm. um, things appear like the dragon in The Man of Evil. Mm-hmm. Terrors. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, that would make sense. Drashigs. Yeah. Drashigs. Yeah. Drashigs. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're so terrifying. <laughs> and they've still got one costume left over. So, yes, what they do is they use their mind powers to contact, well, it's Susan in the original, I'm guessing probably the doctor. Yeah, it's going to be the doctor. Like yeah. uh, it's going to be the doctor. They, they basically asked to meet up. Actually, actually, um, it'd be really interesting if it was Benton. Because his mind's more open, like John's was. Yeah. Could John Levine pull this off? I, I didn't say it'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, bless him. Yeah, he's great. But, mm. is, he, is he great? Um, <laughs> <laughs> exists. Great in uh, kind of a non judgmental <laughs> way. Um, yeah. I love when he cropped up and go for a take. You know the film Go for a Take with. Uh... Well, no. it's kind of. I, can't, I just keep mentioning films that nobody's heard of today. So this one's kind of, it was mm-hmm. a kind of British comedy film. I can't remember who was in it. Um, and it's about a film studio, and it's got the, like the girl from the Double Deckers in it, the little girl playing the character she plays in the Double Deckers. Sounds like totally my thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. maybe find yeah. a, a link to that. Actually, I'm mm-hmm. sure all of that entire film is on YouTube because I'm right. sure I watched it on the. Most yeah. Likely. Yeah. yeah. Go for a take, mm. listeners. For it's take. rubbish, but mm. you know, it's a laugh. But so are we. <laughs> <laughs> so if you listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> well, anybody who listens to us might have a mild interest in it. Mm. So, yes. It's got John Levine in it. Yeah. There you go. See? The boon for all Doctor Who fans. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, basically, we, we established that the sensorites don't trust yeah. the Earthmen. Uh, since they they caused an affliction, basically there was there was a, a spaceship that visited the sphere before, had um, five Earthmen on it, and um, uh, the spaceship visited with these five Earthmen on board, and then uh, two of them went back on the spaceship and took off, but and it blew up, it blew up. That's what happened. The spaceship yeah. blew up with two of them on board, and the kind of sensor was kind of they assumed the rest of them were there as well, but they don't really have any evidence for that. Uh, which will become yeah. significant. So, um, since then, uh, the sensorites have been dying off in numbers. Some kind yeah. of disease on the sensorite. Uh, so they're getting to a bit of a negotiation. Basically, the doctor wants yeah. his lock back. And um, okay, this is where we do get this, the episode two cliffhanger, where the sensorites decide to take mm-hmm. Susan away. Yeah. They're going to take Susan yeah. back to their planet. So the the cliffhanger is. Oh so no, they're taking Susan. Oh no, they're taking <laughs> Benton. <laughs> Oh, well, back to the TARDIS. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it's going to be Joe, really, hasn't it? And yeah, Benton yeah. being... being it probably uh, does, yeah. Indian. Let's make it Benton. It's more interesting. We can do what we want. It's Where's time the threat? Round. Where's the threat? We let's let's, let's, make, we need let's give thing. Benton the femme fatale role. Let's give Benton the kind of screaming girl role <laughs> at the time. Why not? <laughs> It's been aggressive. Where's the threat? I don't know what Where Joe's threat. What's that taking Benton? That's a threat, isn't it? It's a bit of a threat. Do you really care for taking Threat S. Threat around. 
Hmm. All right, I'll take Joe then. Or the master tech, the master nah, tech. He's going to be later. Down. He's going he's to be episode six, isn't he? He's going to be sitting in the sewers. Yeah, he's going to be that bloke in the sewers, pouring deadly nightshade into things. They live in the sewers. We're going to need French. him. Him. We're gonna need him. Kind of like, why the fuck haven't you got a tissue compression eliminator? Why are you doing that? <laughs> you're, you're mad. You're mad. <laughs> well, the, the greatest so power good. in the universe, Doctor. Share it with me. <laughs> it, it, it's just what it's make. <laughs> make it in the food machine. Yeah, time it's got a lot of molybdenum. Yeah, they're surely going to have a lot of it. Yeah, it's sick, it's yeah. yeah. I've got mm-hmm. more molybdenum than you have, mate. <laughs> Get here, doctor. Oh, Behold my molybdenum mountain. Ah. <laughs> 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 so they don't trust the sensor it's, uh what they do is they turn mm-hmm. the lights out um yeah the sensor are scared yeah. of the dark so they turn the lights out and then they're completely oh, helpless the dark. Uh, no. No. oh it's a bit nasty oh, oh dear oh yeah the doctor's kind of saying that look i want me locked back i want the spaceship released Send these people on their way. Um, he's very angry. I mean, heart on the Hurtly Lee Lowen this. Hurtly Lee rocking this. He's good at anger. Mm-hmm. Righteous anger. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. quite as good as Hartnell, but uh, who is brilliant to this bit. So basically, uh, the sensor has promised to cure John and uh, maintenance is going to stay on the spaceship while the others go down. Um, and it all goes down. By curing him, does that mean he won't have like yellow fringes around him anymore? <laughs> DCSO. Oh right, yeah. I, I haven't gone to that. Is he just he's just CSOs? I don't know. I don't know. Right, okay. I, I've lost somebody with yeah. John. <laughs> John's yeah, going to do that. Yeah. Basically, he's just he's yeah, he's mm-hmm. all over the chart. So this is a bit where they go down to the sense bit. I mean, in the Hartnell era, they just you know with one yeah. leader there. I suspect Perry, we've got an opportunity here to yep. put him some bottle shots. Yeah. To actually show them in the shuttle, yeah, maybe yeah. you know, try and transition mm-hmm. that a little bit. So yeah, they 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 make their way to the sense sphere where uh, we meet the the elder, the first yeah. elder. Um, we've got the first elder, we've got the second mm-hmm. elder, we've got the administrator. Is, is, always is, need is, admin, is you know. the second elder going to be played by Don McLean? Just Don because McLean. because because of who's playing the administrator, Packer Jack. Oh, yeah, don't look at it. Right. Yeah. Oh, not, 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 story, mm. story, night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I was, I was, okay, fine. <laughs> that just seems no, random. No, even right. me. Um... <laughs> Can we have Kevin Stoney playing one of them? Yeah. Yeah. See, why not? It can be yeah. first elder. Why yeah. not? Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. quite good at that. So uh, yeah, the uh, the first elder he's there justifying uh, his reasons for inviting right. down the Earth creatures. Um, the second elder is a bit dubious about it. I think the first elder is going to be played got, by Arnold uh, Yarrow. Yeah, who's yeah. okay. Blau? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and who is amazingly yeah. still alive at the age of about one hundred and three. Oh wow! Yeah, is he yeah. still going? Wow! Yeah, yeah. Blau is he's around. Awesome. So yeah, we've got the first elder. He's Quite friendly, he's invited them down. The second elder is slightly dubious about it. And then we've got the administrator who is uh your basic mm-hmm. Trump supporter. Uh as in he's already made yeah. his mind up he's <laughs> against it. And everything yeah. isn't gonna yeah. change that. Uh it's gonna it's not gonna make any difference. Can that be Anthony Hopkins? <laughs> <laughs> and and push out. <laughs> Spend a bit more on him. <laughs> Pick him in some rubber. Yeah. Good job. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now you go with it. Um, well, it's just yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't count. care. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's such a he's such a uh, thankless yeah, role. Yeah, they're all um, they're not great parts of it. None of them are great. 
no, no. I mean, maybe in the seventies they kind of shake these up a bit, and make give them characters, give them names. Maybe mm-hmm. that'd be quite nice. It is what it is. Blackwood, a name. Mm-hmm. Blackwood, mm-hmm. yeah. Blackwood, Blackwood, Blackwood. Which one's that? Blackwood. Yeah. Is the first step. Okay. Yeah. One yeah. of them. Okay. <laughs> He's the second elder. Blackwood. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. You'd have to come out with the ones. Shit. <laughs> 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 Is he the administrator or the, or the leader of the whole centrite yeah. right nation? He's okay, the administrator, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Right, Jeff the, Jeff the administrator. Yeah. Cool, cool. Paul, what's the first uh, administrator called? The first, the first elder called? Nobby. Nobby. <laughs> At least mine was a bit alien. Nobby's alien? How many Nobby's do you know? Yeah, so's Jeff. Jeff's alien. <laughs> I don't know what Jeff's the Nobby's, but... Uh... <laughs> Listener, no listener, alien, I'm just putting it out to you, you know, Blackwood, Jeff, or Nobby, which is the best <laughs> alien name here. I'm telling you, it's Blackwood. <laughs> the wonder said, right. <laughs> uh, so, yes, the administrator, he basically, he's, he's got all kinds of plans yeah. and wants to kill them. We won't go into all of them, to be fair. Um, he's, his first plan is to just shoot them yeah. um, yeah. with a big old gun. But he's got positions well, he's somewhere. He's in the heart, isn't he? Yeah, I like yeah, the idea of the disintegrator. It's really weird, weird and interesting weapon. Yeah. You know, you can basically beam yeah. destruction to wherever and whenever. That's yeah, kind of okay. quite scary. Yeah. It's like they go when they, that bit where they go kind of where are their hearts? Are they the left, the right, or in the middle, like ours? And you think mm. it's a very precise weapon. This isn't it? Yeah, you yeah. just <laughs> give it a slightly <laughs> broader beam, and then you know it wouldn't actually matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just chest area. Come on, just, you know, go for it. <laughs> but it's kind of scary. I mean, no yeah. wonder they're all so yeah. well Yeah. If the disintegrator can be beamed into what? anyone, anywhere, and just uh, fucking mm. disintegrate you, I will. <laughs> Great bits of you. At mm-hmm. any point, the disintegrator mm-hmm. could be beamed into their heart. Oh. It's basically a, a massive dictatorship, yeah. isn't it? I it's think just, so. Uh, I mean, yeah. They've got this car system, yeah. which um, yeah. never gets no. criticised. No. You kind of think, <laughs> it's, oh yeah, everyone's happy in their car. Really? Really? Indeed. Really, really? It's uh, an interesting yeah. society, the sensor right one. Potentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's you're, you there, you're happy in your car, aren't you? Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Go back yeah. and drink your shitty water. Please don't disintegrate my heart <laughs> in the middle of my chest. <laughs> in the middle, not yeah, the left, the middle. Right, the right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, basically, the TARDIS crew turn up there. They've got Carol and John yeah. with them. John immediately senses evil, oh, yeah, um, because he's like that. That's, mm-hmm. that's just how he is. And then, uh, yeah, they they basically they leave him behind because they're going. Yeah, they sent John off mm-hmm. to get cured. He's going to be putting his his brain yeah. helmet on. And I love his brain water. helmet. <laughs> I'm totally going to build one of those actually, brain helmets. Yeah. That's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's quite cool. Yeah. So we get this quite telegraph scene where the, the first elder basically says, look, do you want some of this crystal water? Yeah. Like, I've got the nice crystal water. Or do you want some of this shitty <laughs> no, the, water? The, 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 yeah, the, 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 the lowers. I mean, the, yeah. the cast system. Is, yeah. Kind of like we have today. Yeah, yeah. Cast system is great, by the way. All for the cast mm. system. But... You do have to make the yeah. shitty water from yeah. the bottom. Do you want that? I don't want it. They do make a point, kind of going, it's like, all right, shitty it. water, but I mean, seriously, this stuff's much better. <laughs> much better. <laughs> Come and drink my nice bottled water that I, yeah. I get from Evian. <laughs> now, you just drink the yeah. shit out of the taps, yeah. right? You'd yeah. be happy with that. And Ben's, yeah, yeah, all right, you know, I've had tap water, yeah. I'm fine. Uh, knocks it back. Ian, not Ben. And uh, uh, Ben Tom. Oh, Ben Tom. Bent on. Yeah. Yes. Bent on. Yeah. Bent on. Bent on. So, yeah. And immediately collapses. Yeah. He just falls ill. Um, so, uh, uh, we, we, we immediately <laughs> work out where this disease is coming from. And uh, mm-hmm. he's basically dying at that point. So, uh, yeah. So, we've got another three episodes to come up here. Uh, In fairness, there's not a lot happening uh, to them, though. It does really slow down no, from this point no. on. It does. It really does. Yeah. Um, 
basically, yeah, the doctor realizes pretty quickly. Yeah. He's not a complete <laughs> fucking idiot. And uh, Benton's got three days to live, so they they persuade the sense rights to uh, let him back in the TARDIS. Oh, we know he tries to persuade to let him back in his TARDIS. That's right. It's yeah. like, no, no, um, no. No, 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 no. Not having that. Not having that. Is this one where he busts out some Aikido? <laughs> he probably would. He should do, really, yeah. shouldn't he? Yeah. Well, they're going, give me my yeah. fucking lock back. <laughs> so, yeah, the, we've got the administrator in the background um, doing schemes. He does a yeah. lot of schemes, basically. Everything they try to do, yeah. he's trying to counter. Um, he realises that they can't tell him apart from the other sense rights unless they wear the right yeah. senses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's just not great. There's, it, in yeah. no way is it's that not big. It's brilliant. Um, because no, even the masks they, look different. They kinda, masks look wildly different. Yeah. They kind of hand wave it that, oh, yeah, we don't put our pictures out there, so most sense rights don't know. Yeah, what but they've got eyes. Like, but it, I know. It's terrible. That bit's yeah. terrible. I love the story, but that's just appalling. That's that's. I love the edge of the truck, yeah. but the spring is shit. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah, it's just mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's not great mm-hmm. that they kind of openly say to the sense right as well. Well, you all look the same to us. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed. indeed. No. Yeah, let's <laughs> that's, that's not kind of go racism. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, basically, they, they the doctor works out that um, Benton's got atropine mm-hmm. poisoning. Yeah. So um, he kind of creates an antidote. The administrator kind of intercepts mm-hmm. it, but that doesn't go anywhere because then Joe just goes and gets some more. Yep. Um, <clears throat> padding. So uh, <laughs> you're skipping yes. through episodes. Right? <laughs> padding, padding. Flying through. Yeah, yeah, here we are. We're flying through. Well, this is the bit where if you want to bring the master in to give us two episodes here, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two episodes <laughs> worth of material. This will be where he maybe shows that's up. Not it, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. disguised as a sensor, right? That's a good question. <laughs> I, mean, I suppose he's going to be then, isn't he? Is he the administrator? Yeah, yeah. maybe he is. Yeah. Maybe he's the yeah. <laughs> That'd be right. funny. He just um, doesn't look anything like one of the sensor rights, but he's wearing the sash. And they go, it's the administrator. Yeah. Oh, can't tell you apart. It's extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, he takes it off, and they're like, "It's the master." It's the master. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that little yeah. collar, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I'm sorry. I think you'll find I'm the administrator." <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> you seem a little darker around the mouth, like, and the, the rest of us. I, I can't imagine why, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been telling? Well, maybe he's already there. Maybe, maybe he's a prisoner, and he's 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 sowing seeds of doubt with the sense rights that no, they can't trust uh. humans. Maybe, um, maybe he's manipulating manipulating the administrator. Yeah, mm-hmm. could be. Mm-hmm. yeah, that would kind of explain some of the administrator's doggedness. Frankly, he was the first human human to come down. Two more, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Because he's worked mm-hmm. out how to use molybdenum to build a like was weapon. Yeah, was weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good, good. Okay. Uh, so yeah, they're taking. Maybe Joe on. finds uh, a little shrunken sensorite somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In a lunchbox. Yeah. The original, the original ad, uh, administrator and. Uh, the master's just there wearing yeah, his face. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. he never just disguises. I mean, he does a disguise in Mind of Evil. He has a mask on. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. And Terror of the Autons. And, uh, uh, so, no Terry reason Autons, why, yeah. if he can disguise as a human, yeah. no reason why he He's can't disguise as a sensor, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that would give mm-hmm. Joe something to do, actually. It's if quite... you know, Benton's kind of wheezing his last, Joe goes looking. And finds evidence, yeah. finds you know a shrunken sensor eye and a you know yeah. like a mold or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or a couple absolutely. of sensor eye masks. Yeah, cool. Which is going well, but why would the sensor eyes have masks? Why that's crazy. Yeah, because they can't possibly have that's any insane. art or anything. <laughs> <laughs> 
we'd probably do some scenes on location here as well, wouldn't we? Because uh, they'd probably go out in the mm. wilds beyond mm. the city. Oh, yeah. Some scenes mm-hmm. in the quarry. Uh, they'd have mm-hmm. some of that stuff going on. Um, like clay pit. It's quite... Uh, Lots yeah, of dry ice. It's a different style. It's a different way of doing mm. things, isn't it? I mean, uh, in the hardware era, they've got... The only bit where they're kind of outdoors, they kind of walk past a window and you can see they've got a painted backdrop there yeah. in the city. Which kind of looks, looks yeah, great. Yeah, I like that backdrop. You yeah. Know. But it's, it's very much well, of its time. You know, they'd be doing CSO models. You know, they'd be Yeah, it would, like, it, it would look worse. <laughs> yeah. It would look worse. It just would. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm. <laughs> I once stitched together bits and pieces from photos and screen grabs of that backdrop because I wanted to see what it looks like. <laughs> I'll send it to you, Bo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, cool. if you mm. yeah. mm-hmm. and if you don't want, I won't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be quite and you shall. Sure. Sure. Commercial time. We are going on a journey, a very long journey, through the world of the Target novelizations and publication order. Every week, we are looking at a new book, talking about Terrence Dix, Malcolm Hulk and all our Doctor Who novelization friends. Whatever you do, keep turning the pages. This is Jason Miller of the Doctor Who Literature Podcast, a member of the Direction Point Podcast Network, and you are listening to Woof Time Round. So uh, anyway, um, it, it turns out that the water from the aqueducts, they've got an aqueduct, which is... Which you... Good. Start again. Stop it. Barry Williams is from the South. Oh, God. They cannot speak properly there. <laughs> and they do not have ITV. What's I saying? They've got an aqueduct. aqueduct. They've got... <laughs> Technically, we do have ITV. Um... Aqueduct. Aqueduct. They've got an aqueduct, which the, the, the shitty drinking mm-hmm. water comes from. And have nowadays, uh, so the it? doctor decides to investigate with the it. Tories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's, it's basically they've, they've privatized their water. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And actually, exactly actually, it'll probably yeah. be a satire in some way because this is the Barry Letts era. Yeah. Uh, and he was always mm. doing that. Fair play to him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not only being they still had decent water then, but. <laughs> Barry Williams' <laughs> cat is being very distracting. <laughs> and the music. <laughs> so he decides to go into the aqueduct um, where he gets yeah. basically attacked. And um, yeah, his coat gets shredded, which Perry oh. won't be happy about. No. So uh, they decide to, they tool up basically, they tool up, they get some maps and they get some uh, um, maps. Weapons, and weapons, and weapons, yeah. weapons, weapons, and maps. Weapons I and love the sensor on the weapons. Mm, I things. love those things. Those heart, oh, yeah. mm. heart. They're great. They're, they're imaginative. Yeah, little yeah. tennis yeah. rackets. It's a great shame yeah. that the sound effect is only. Mm. That's it. <laughs> it doesn't quite match up to the imagination of the props, but never mind. Mm. Mm. Yes. So uh, yeah, they go into the aqueduct with their maps and their their weapons and. Uh, Assuming they got torches, mm-hmm. or, you know, something like that. But the administrator is way ahead of them. He, he, he's he's rejigged the maps, sabotaged the weapons. He's, oh, he's it's a great master thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite a master thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the first time I watched the Sensorites, um, when you get that kind of end of an episode where Hartnell kind of gets knocked down and that. Mm-hmm. I kind of thought, well, that's him over for an episode because I was sure it was going to be one of <laughs> his kind of be. holidays, and then he, yeah. he'd be just put under a tarpaulin for the next episode. Yeah. But uh, no, I was wrong. He's back. Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. wondered for a while if the title of the Gunfighters episode, A Holiday for the Doctor, is based on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at that point, they kind of stop giving them holidays. Yeah. yeah. Lloyd comes in, apart from when he Martin goes, oh, I'm knackered. Um, <laughs> yeah. then I'm not coming in today. And they go, right, okay, we'll just write round you at the last minute. Fine. Get the top, get the top all in out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he ran a tight ship, didn't he, Lloyd, didn't he? Yeah. 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 Oh, mad lad. 
So, yeah, while this has all been going on, um, Carol's been kidnapped. Um, so maybe you give yeah. Joe something to do here. Joe's going to be leading the investigation to try and find her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, establishing, presumably, that the master's behind all this and, you know, mm-hmm. risk we know. Um, which in the visual version, Barbara comes, it's such a relief when Barbara turns up and she just says, Right, okay. Great, right, isn't it? Just sorts <laughs> it comes down, takes control. Yeah. 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 Also, right. Yeah. Uh, though we do get that great scene. I mean, it's the it's the it's the one bit where you think, I wonder if David Whitaker wrote this bit, but it's the bit where Susan suddenly starts talking about Gallifrey or yeah. the skies yeah. and silver leaves and all that yeah. stuff. And the dialogue seems to lift to my mind. I mean Better. yeah. Yeah. No criticism yeah. of Peter R. Newman, but I mean, it's kind of nope. suddenly it's on another level. Um, it seems like a Whitaker scene. Um it doesn't raise yeah. the plot at all, but it's it's great. Um I agreed entirely, I've always thought the same. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And script editor's job. Absolutely. Yeah. Say, so, my God, this is slow. Let's put an extra scene in. Yeah. 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 Let's get some character here. <laughs> yeah. Which he's very good at. Yeah. When he's not talking about Mercury. Yeah. 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 Get him off Susan's powered by Mercury. <laughs> Joe's <laughs> powered by Mercury. <laughs> well, Whitaker's left the series by now. Uh, you know, we've missed out on that opportunity. Yeah. True. Yeah. So, so uh, the country as well. Hmm? Oh, Australia. With Australia. Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. yeah. Became quite Have you seen Looking for David? David? Have I what? Looking for David. Have you seen Looking for David? Um possibly. documentary about him. Uh, I I think, yeah, I think, uh, he became the yeah. head of the writers' guild or something, didn't he? So he, he was quite a big I mean the thing is, you know, he didn't become quite powerful at all. It's a very sad story. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll not give it away, but it's worth seeing. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Is that on one of the Blu-rays? Mm-hmm. Right, okay. Hmm. So while that's going on, the, the Doctor and Benton presumably are in the cave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they find that their maps are wrong and the weapons have been sabotaged. I can totally see that as well. Yeah. Yeah. We can really see them working well. together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Doctor would be looking after him, basically, wouldn't he? He'd be kind of... Yeah, he'd be doing yeah. a job. Yeah, yeah. And eventually, they get they get attacked by these humans who have got sharpened sticks. So they're, clear, yeah. they're, they're advanced. Yeah. Uh, pointed <laughs> sticks. Pointed sticks. Yeah. Nothing we can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, yeah, they get captured basically. Well, that's going to be a high moment, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. They're not they're not going to be any match for John. Are but they? there's too many of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. They pile on three, three. Yeah, yeah. They're they're a bit ragged in the original version. They're they're a bit mad. Yeah. They're basically yep. just crazy. Um, I guess we can. They're under the master's thrall, so you know they're, yeah. they're following hypnotic instructions. Yep. Yeah, I love yeah. the fact that in the original, the kind of leader of them is very kind of uh, okay, chaps, sort of thing. Yeah, and it's, it's, really qu- like... it's quite postmodern for nineteen. It is. Uh, yeah, yeah, nineteen sixty, yeah, early sixties. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, it's um, really yeah. you know it's it's that whole you know I think Peter R. Newman had written the the only other thing that he's known to have written is a yeah. film. Oh, about yeah, yeah. A, a, a Japanese soldier in the jungle who didn't know which, which happened. Yeah. Yes, just, yes, that's so. right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's kind of real. Mm. Yeah, in that way. You also knew yeah. about that stuff, didn't you? Yeah, it's John Bailey yeah. as well, wasn't it? It's kind of it's the best best part in the story, really. It's kind of yeah. And I've yeah. always yeah. liked this bit. I've always liked you know, the, the, the the commander who's who's. As Paul says, very British and very much, you know, keep the stiff upper lip. Mm. Yeah. Crumbles when questioned at all. Yeah. He gets defensive straight away. Yeah. He has no justification for his uh, empire building. It's Kurtz, basically, isn't it? It's Kurtz from uh, Edu- uh, The Heart of Darkness. Yeah. 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 That character, basically. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He's gone mad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, it's just called the Commander. I mean, this, yeah. this story hates naming people. Give some. <laughs> Yeah. names, you know. Apart from Carol. Apart from <laughs> Carol. Carol and John. They're all right. But yeah. yeah. Nobody else. They're the, probably the people who like live next door to Peter Aaron Newman or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. We'll just use their names. Yeah. We've missed out a lot of stuff about John under his brilliant head. Well, yeah, You're John. Like, oh, uh, evil was evil. Yes, he has been sensing evil all the way through. Um he's, so he's maybe the master has yeah. found a way of hypnotizing the entire set. Right, the sensorites are telepathic. Mm-hmm. So the master has found a way of using his hypnotic skills and spreading it, broadcasting it. 
across the entire center right race. Mm-hmm. And John's the first one to see it. Right. And actually, John saw it in the first place and went, hey, center right. No, wait, there's something going on. And the master realized that and like yeah. blasted him. Yes. Yes. With mind shit. Ah, yes. Yeah. The center right. He mind shitted him. Yes. Yes. Yeah, he mind shitted him. Yeah, that's yeah. better. Yeah. Center right mind shit. Mm hmm. <laughs> I guess a much more threat and kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It explains why you know, the administrator's plans are so shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, he, you know, that that was their big weakness. They, you know, they, they could cope with humans and all that sort of thing. They weren't xenophobic at all until yeah. the master made them so. They weren't by mind control. The master. Mind control, yes. Um, yeah. And this is Barry Letts going, hey, this is a lesson. Don't mm. listen to charismatic politicians. Mm. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Excellent. Boom. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he called one of the characters uh, Zinon uh, as a kind of anagram of Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Zinon. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so be... it's, a political, it's a political rant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And quite right, too. <laughs> yeah. No, that's much stronger. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. So yeah, we have a sort of final confrontation in the tunnels. Um, I know that um, in the original version, Barbara and John turn up. They kind of following the Doctor and Ian into the tunnels. Yeah. Um, and then they, they kind of they all get captured. But it, it turns out that this commander blew up two of his own men in the spaceship. He, he's just bonkers. Mm-hmm. But uh, they managed. Command of the master. Hmm. Is the commander the master, or is the master the naughty sensor right? In I think it's got to be the it's got to be the master behind it all. So perhaps, yeah, perhaps uh, the master's down there, yeah, controlling everything. Yeah. Um, hmm. Do you think there'd be a few more of them in this version? Because there's literally three in the original. There might be a few more. They might not be quite so easily tricked in that they, no, they just yeah. get out of the tunnels and then the sensor rights knobble them, basically. Yeah. Um, when they when he goes, out. kind of, you men follow me. He, you know, yeah, no, he says to his second in command, get the men to follow me. And you're thinking, there's you, yeah. your second in command, and one other guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, I like that. I mean, it's yeah. very sad. Mm. Yeah. You know, they're very broken. Yeah. Um, it's, he, He's obviously maintaining a sham, you know, get your uniform yeah. sorted out, all that sort of thing. Mm. Um, for the men, you understand, not for me, it's yeah. for the men, all well, <laughs> that sort of bit. So I, I, I kind of like that. Yeah. Well, in this version, I think, I think in the 1971 version, it's going to be more of a pitch battle, like, yeah. like between, you know, Caldwell and, and, and his lot and IMC. Yeah. 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 There'll be guns involved. They've got guns. There'll be, yeah. There'll be guns. Yeah. There'll be more shooting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Joe's done her a bit. The sense rights are kind of no longer. By Havoc. Yeah. <laughs> the sense rights are no longer under the master's influence, so you know they can mm-hmm. all start to pile in. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can leap over rocks and do things, you know, <laughs> do some assaults and blow up, you mm-hmm. know? <laughs> which is fine because the story, as it stands, ends quite suddenly. So we can perhaps make a bit more of a climax here. Mm-hmm. Maybe put a bit of episode six into what's left of episode five. A bit uh, of a fight scene. Yeah, yeah, a bit of a fight scene, stretch things out here, because yeah, um, what happens is they all get captured basically, and then we have a final scene where it turns out that uh, the humans got taken back to Earth, and the administrator has been banished. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, see ya. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, all right, bye, and um, they will leave basically. Um, yeah. So we could, yeah, we could have a, a more of a. More of a grand finale. Yeah. More of, more of a grand finale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. They run out into the, the quarry and yeah. have a big off yeah. So yeah. yeah. And that's basically it, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, they all get back in the TARDIS and uh, the Doctor threatens to put Benson off the ship the next place they land. <laughs> oh, well, this is this is them going <laughs> back to Earth and, and, and the Brigadier who's been set up at the beginning going, come back at once or something like that. Yes. Yes, kind of going, Sergeant Benton, where the hell have you been? And you, you'd never believe me, sir. <laughs> yeah. <they> go, <laughs> Laugh the ending. Yes, yeah. Even Job, who has a voice like that, um, <laughs> that's how Joe talks. Somebody offers him a glass of water, and he's like, "Oh no, I'm not a glass." Nice, of water. nice. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. 
and, and the doctor and Joe burst out laughing, and the brigadier looks confused and yeah. Uh, great. Yeah. yeah, Benton's wearing a nappy. It's all great. Yeah. Benton's wearing a nappy. You know, the brigadier yeah. decides never to touch water again. You know, he's going to stick to yeah. He'd rather, he'd rather yeah. have yeah. a pint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and dies of dehydration for the next season. <laughs> Ensplainment. Ensplainment. Well, so, chaps, that was the sense, right? Better or worse? Worse. <laughs> I could say better. I think it might, might be better. I'm erring towards better as well. Yeah. Um, uh, much as I love the sensor rights, I do appreciate its failings. Mm-hmm. Um, and it would be better paced in the 70s. Uh, yeah. If you could condense maybe episodes four and five just into one and then yeah, do yeah, more stuff yeah. the master, then yes. Yeah. Um, I just think it's not a story that they would have done then, really, not. is it? It's If you think what they did to, you know, um, David Whittaker's ambassadors of death story did you know yeah this you can't imagine them doing this slow paced story yeah, the original like, sense right is good man goes to war in the 60s well yeah, yes that's, that's true. what we're stuck with that's that's no, the, that's no, the no, trap that's we made for ourselves. That's the beast yeah but well, I mean, you're yeah, right. You're, you're right. Really... I mean yeah it, it, it's not you know there would have been the nearest i can think of it is the mutants actually mm. yeah probably yeah. um yeah because it hasn't got I don't know why anything. but I mean, this is, I mean, the sense rights in particular is, is not very sophisticated. It is very much running around lots of plots. Yeah. Um, uh, it's aimed at the average five year old, basically. And it's, I, it, I, you know, by the 70s, that's not what they were doing. They were doing. No. You know, and it's, it's funny because it starts off quite sophisticated. You know, you've got dead bodies that come back to life. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And people, that, you know, the, the psychological implications of what's being done to them are yeah. great. Yeah. That's really strong. Um, and then they go to the sense sphere and it kind of falls apart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the sense rights can't tell each other apart unless they've got sashes on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I had never thought of that and all that. There, you yeah. know, it, it, it really to my mind, it really is dragged down by the sense sphere. I love the design. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love the design a yeah. lot. But story wise, this stuff on the spaceship, you know, the first few episodes are much more interesting and creepy, creepy yeah. as hell. Yeah. Um yeah. I think Mervyn Pinfield did creepy very well. Mm. As as in as with the Space Museum. Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah, very similar to the Space Museum in that it has that yeah. kind of very intriguing opening creepy episode one. It kind of yeah. brings yeah. you yeah. in. Yeah. And yeah. then yeah. doesn't really have anywhere to go after yeah. that. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. like something out of the chimney era, apart from the fact that it was good to start off with. <laughs> 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 I'll roll some numbers, shall I? <laughs> yes. Okay. Eight. Eight. Ooh. Eight. Again. Again. Oh yeah. my god. In story. Mm-hmm. One one six. One one six. Wow. Okay. So what was it? You, the eighth doctor. In Davison Castrovalba. Oh! <laughs> oh my god, we have to launch the entire Bible <laughs> with Castrovalba. <laughs> Thank you, the time ram. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Cheers again. Of, of all the opening stories for doctors, that is probably the least likely least one that they would have done doctor. for the eighth doctor. Yeah. Oh, yep. god. <laughs> Oh, I don't know what we do with that. Yeah, okay. Grace and Chang Lee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and Cardinal Barusa. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That's, oh that's not God. an awful lot to cram in at all. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> already a complex story. Good. <laughs> Good. Oh, God. <laughs> well, well, on the bright side, Castro is a story of two halves. <laughs> um, yeah. We've got two yeah. episodes of the TARDIS. Mm-hmm. That's where we do all the Barusa stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. And okay. Set up the yeah. story and all that bit. Yeah. And then we go to Castro Valva and then it can stay pretty much the same, I think. 
I hope say so. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, I hope. I know I don't say so. I just <laughs> hope. I just hope. <laughs> oh, right. <clears throat> and that was time round for this week. Join us next time. <laughs> <laughs> for, for Paul McGann's regeneration story, <laughs> Astro Alba. I've been Rupert Booth, and I imagine I will be next time. And with me, Paul Ferry. Bye. And Barry Williams. Bye bye. Don't worry about the recursive occlusion. Bye. We have been Time Ram. If you'd like to get in touch with us, we can be mostly found on Twitter, where I am at Rupert Booth, Baz is at Baz Time Ram, and Paul is Paul Ferry 8. There's also a Facebook page. Thank you to Ben Jones for providing our music as ever. Please go and support him on SoundCloud. There are links on our website. And if you'd like to support the production of this podcast, give us some money via Patreon. It's that simple patreon.com slash timeram and you'll get exclusive stuff. As I'm concerned, anything can be a risk of handbook. I like her in Zodiac. Has anybody ever seen Zodiac? It's a very strange series. I copy of Zodiac. I haven't actually watched it yet. No, it's one of those things where it kind of seemed like a better idea for a series than the actual <laughs> series is. But uh... Explain Zodiac to me. What, what well, it? yeah, they're, they're, they're like, um, I don't know, is he a detective or is he a reporter or something? But they kind of solve mysteries through using kind of the Zodiac. <laughs> and it's just like... Um, Oh, crap. <laughs> it was one of those things that kind of probably looked great on paper until they actually had to write them and then they're going, oh, There's a man do this. carrying some water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This week you are going to be doing a murder. <laughs> In the early 70s, everything's about the fucking Zodiac. Yeah. You're yeah. obsessed yeah. with it. <laughs> I mean, ITV's art show was called Aquarius. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It will come from here. Direction point! Direction point! A Doctor Who Podcast Network.